When it comes to CPU cooling, there's a lot of brands on the market, from small startups to big powerhouses who have been around for many years. And one brand that keeps cropping up lately is Valkyrie, who have done wonders in the Asian market, but are now making a big push into the West. So we took a trip to China to see their factory and to see how CPU coolers on both the air and AIO side of things are manufactured. When we arrived at the Dongguan based factory bright and early, production was already well underway and stepping into the first room of the factory, we were greeted with a fair bit of noise as a small army of machines were stamping out parts for both AIOs and air coolers. The machines are fed a constant supply of sheet metal that is stamped out into different shapes, with the product then sliding down a ramp to be collected into a tray and checked by a supervising employee to make sure that things are running smoothly, whilst the waste material slides down in a different direction to be collected into a bin and disposed of correctly. With so many product types and so many different standards to adhere to, all of these giant machines still aren't enough to create all the parts that are needed, which is why the moulds or tooling are actually interchangeable and is a relatively simple task that two employees are able to achieve. The process is pretty self-explanatory, it's a case of taking one mould out and putting a new one in, but that's easier said than done since they weigh so much, which is why we can see these employees using a pallet truck to help lift and move the mould or tooling into place. Just around the corner from here, we can actually see the sheer quantity of operations they're able to achieve this way by looking at the mountains of tooling that they have on standby. Now, something worth noting is that plenty of these aren't even used for Valkyrie's consumer products, as much like many other factories, they don't just make consumer products, but also make a range of industrial products too. But we'll touch on that a little bit later on. When we take a look at all of the trays full of parts and all the rolls of material, we can see they're clearly taking full advantage of all of this to make as much as they can in-house as possible. Doing it this way allows Valkyrie to create even more products than some other companies as they're able to do product development, manufacturing and R&D all in-house, which is the downside of many other companies that rely on third parties to make the products. And this is something very important to the company's mantra, especially when it comes to quality control. All of this equipment isn't just for cutting though, they're also being used for assembling some of the parts, as we can see here where a worker is placing mounting brackets down with screws that are then stamped by the machine to complete the assembly. We'll also see later on how they can be used during the full assembly process. From here we were taken upstairs where we could see more of the assembly process for air coolers and this part of the process starts here where the staff are manually placing the heat sinks that were assembled downstairs onto pre-bent heat pipes and clamping everything together. They then add some liquid solder and put the whole unit in a cage before it's passed through an oven to melt the solder and ensure everything is held securely together. At the end, they're then removed from the cages and the complete cooler is placed onto a table ready for the next part of the process. Now, if we were after silver coolers, then we would basically be done at this point, but Valkyrie also make different colored coolers, which is why they're then packed away and sent off to be powder coated. And when they return, we now have these stunning looking white coolers. Of course, white isn't the only color that Valkyrie does, but that's what was being assembled while we were at the factory. And this can change on a day-to-day -day basis or even partway through the day where they switch product lines. The next step is pre-applied thermal paste, and this is a pretty easy one. For this, a cooler is placed down under a guide and then a worker manually spreads the thermal paste over the cold plate before taking a quick look to make sure everything is correct. And then a plastic cover is added before it's moved along the assembly line to the next worker who screws the aesthetic covers onto the coolers. Then from there, the cooler is pretty much done. It just needs a fan to be added, which are brought in separately, boxed up and sent out to happy customers. But during the day, the whole production line is changed and this typically happens around lunchtime, which leads me on to AIOs. The process for AIOs is a bit different and the first thing that needs doing is the assembly of the pump. For this, the workers wind the coils and to do that, parts that were made downstairs are placed into a machine that quickly winds the coils, doing four at once to speed up the process even further. These coils are then taken to be soldered before they're added into the assembly line, where all the pieces come together and these are again checked along the way at every single stage. Because though the factory is reliant on machinery, there's still a very big human element to everything with checks being done frequently to make sure parts are being manufactured to the standards that Valkyrie set out for themselves. There's a whole team of people working together to place and screw different parts together, including PCBs, LEDs, cables, and housing to create the final product, all up until it reaches a point where the cold plate is ready to be screwed on. And that part is done automatically by a machine that's programmed to screw everything in perfectly, finishing this part of the process and meaning that the pump heads are now ready to be attached to the radiator. Now, since Valkyrie don't make the radiators in-house, that means that the process starts with a pre-made radiator, and this part, while seemingly simple, is anything but. Firstly, the radiators need connectors, and this process is pretty simple. 
It's just a tube being fed into a machine that cuts the right size and drops them into a bin to then be connected to a tube that's then attached to the radiator before it gets stored with all of the other radiators that are ready to be taken along to the pumps that we made earlier. Once they've been attached, the radiators need filling with coolant. For this, the cap is removed and is then passed along to a filling machine where a member of staff places the radiator correctly and presses a button that then automatically starts the filling process. The machine is programmed to pump the exact amount of coolant needed into the radiator before it's taken by the worker to have the cap reattached. From here, the process is getting close to being finished. Next comes more checks, because it's not just good enough to be making the products, you also need to make sure they function as advertised. And some of these tests include the use of large ovens that test the longevity of the products. They aren't just for AIOs either. They use these for all sorts of components, including fans. What these ovens are essentially doing is baking the products for a few hours at a time at temperatures higher than what a user would be able to reach to ensure that they hold up to the most extreme scenarios that they may be unrealistically thrown at. Because if it can survive the unreasonable, then we know it'll be perfect for day-to-day -day application that they're actually meant for. Now this doesn't just include durability tests, there are also plenty of functionality tests throughout the process to make sure that the products actually work. These tests are done both manually by staff and automatically by test software that we weren't actually able to have a look at for security reasons. But as you can see, there are a whole load of AIOs plugged into PWM boards that are testing the pumps automatically in the background. So whether it's manual or automatic, there's always something going on at any one time. The testing was so prevalent that they even had a dedicated testing room where a team of employees all worked together to check products that are both taken randomly from the product line to ensure that the products hold up to the company's strict quality standards, but also products that failed other tests to figure out what failed and why. Because when you're a company that is buying in parts from third party manufacturers, you need to make sure that everything along the way is working as it should. Otherwise, you could have some serious problems and the consumer would blame Valkyrie as a brand, even if it's not their fault directly. The equipment in this room was pretty full on and a lot of it looked custom made to meet their requirements. And I suppose that when you have the facilities to make these things for yourself, then why not? Because that all saves on costs. Within this room, we also saw some staff doing quality checking on a giant metal plate. We weren't told what this was being used for specifically, just that it wasn't a commercial product. As since Valkyrie have the resources for it, they also use their factory and cooling expertise to create products that are used in a more industrial setting, including the likes of heat sinks for industrial lighting, since the lights create so much heat that they, well, need to be cooled. We even saw some of this being made earlier where we could see a member of staff using a machine to press heat sink fins onto heat pipes. With everything ready to go, it's time to get everything packed up, starting with the mounting hardware. And for that, an employee manually places the correct parts into little trays that are conveniently labelled to ensure there's no confusion for the end user. These trays are then passed along and put into the appropriate boxes. Much like everything else, the staff are working like one well-oiled machine to efficiently get everything packed into the product boxes before it all heads down to a packing area, where the products are placed in boxes ready to be shipped out to retailers and customers. On our way back through the factory to head to their offices and streaming room, we got a chance to see the warehouse where they keep all of the finished products. And as you can see for yourself, it was pretty staggering. The absolute monstrous amount of products that this factory is able to create is, well, frankly impressive. And with Valkyrie being so popular, particularly in Asia, it's no surprise that they need to be creating this much. And this was just, well, the tip of the iceberg, as we were told that they have other warehouses and storage facilities close by. As I just teased, Valkyrie do indeed have a streaming room, and this is where we had our first chance to look at the final products and their impressive packaging, including a host of keyboards, which we also saw at Valkyrie's booth at Computex. So if you want to check out that video, then the link is in the description below. Now, much like when we were at Computex, the Valkyrie staff were incredibly keen to hear what we had to say about the products and what we think would work better in the Western markets, as they're currently making a big push to reach the West with their products. And like we said at Computex, I can really see a certain demographic loving these products, particularly anime fans. So if you like what you see and would buy any of these, well, let us know in the comment section down below. And even though I'm not really an anime fan myself, I did love the different color schemes and the boxes, at least compared to the competition. Because, well, they really do stand out as being fun and cool, while still keeping that premium aesthetic, and that adds to the overall experience. We had a chance to look at the unboxing experience of the products, as this is something that Valkyrie really pride themselves on, and they were keen to get our feedback. While speaking to the staff, they were mentioning that the goal for packaging is threefold. Part one is obviously to keep the product safe, that goes without saying. The second part also goes without saying, they want the unboxing experience to be memorable, because they know that getting a new toy like this is always exciting. So making the unboxing experience exciting as well will make it feel that extra bit special. 
Finally, they told us that they wanted to create something the user would be proud to own. And I can certainly see that in the way that the boxes look. As we were chatting, we all agreed that they'd look amazing on a shelf of a streamer or in a game room. And the staff were really happy to hear us say that as it's, well, exactly the type of reaction that they wanted to see. Speaking of the staff being happy with the products, we did notice that throughout the tour, the staff all seemed proud of the products that they were working on, checking everything as they went, ensuring things went smoothly and all working efficiently. We also saw lunch break starting while we were there, and even though we didn't actually grab footage of that since we wanted to give the staff some privacy, we did notice that everyone was all laughs and smiles as they headed out for lunch, getting a real sense of pride in their work and what they were achieving on a day-to-day -day basis. With that, we are pretty much done here, but before we said our goodbyes to the kind staff, we were taken to have a sneak peek at some upcoming products, including some new air cooler designs, some new fan designs, and also some new AIOs, with the highlight for me being this nifty, interchangeable top design that allows Valkyrie to make different tops that are easily replaceable by the end user. But not only that, it allows the customer to choose from more options for a more customizable product, allowing each user to make a system that fits with their own desires. And what is PC building about if it's well, not individuality? As we were leaving, we saw one more part of the process and we thought it was actually quite funny, as this was the returns desk. It was just a single guy working away, reading all of the notes on a system and checking products for faults or damage. What we found funny about this was that even though the factory has such a large output, the number of return products is so low that well, they only need one guy to work through it all, which I think says a lot about the quality of the products and the service. Thanks to all the checks and all the testing throughout the process, there were very few return products. And even though we walked past here a few times, we didn't know what it was until we were leaving because the employee working here wasn't there at any other point that we walked past because he just frankly isn't needed there that often, which goes to show that even though they have a large output, the returns and fault rate are extremely low. So there we have it, the Valkyrie factory tour. It was a fun kind of experience to look around and see how things are done behind the scenes. Of course, I'd like to thank Valkyrie for giving us this opportunity to see how it's done and taking such good care of us while we were with them. I'd also like to thank you for watching and if you like this video, then be sure to give us a like and a subscribe, as well as letting us know in the comments section what you thought. Would you buy any of these products? Would you like to see more of this type of content? Let us know. And if you wanna help us in making content, then be sure to support us over on Patreon, where you get all sorts of benefits, including exclusive behind the scenes content, bi-weekly game nights, access to our testing data, access to our special Patreon only Discord channels, and much more. The link for all that great stuff is as always down below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. See you later guys, bye bye.